Hey people, it's me again. So, anyways, I normally don't really get emotional in some ways like that, you know, but only if I watch certain things or on TV or on YouTube that would make me feel this sort of way and, or other stuff that's kind of occurring in my day-to-day -day life that would also make me feel emotionally wound up in some ways, you know. What if I get all uh, angry or sad or whatever it is and, and a lot of times I think I end up doing that because I'm just mimicking all the emotions of everyone around me in some cases, you know. Sometimes I think I'm might be a little bit too empathetic in some ways, you know, when, when, um, being an Aspie in some ways that you're always being marked as being kind of not empathetic in some ways, but it's just like I feel the emotions, but it's just hard to kind of, to process these emotions and all that, and to express it in, in certain ways, you know, and so... A lot of times it's just, when I try to express certain emotions when I was younger, it was always coming off in some ways that were not uh, appropriate, and to say it lightly in a way, but, but now that I'm older, now that I could probably learn how to at least somewhat verbalize my emotions in some ways, you know, but... It takes a while for me to try to get that out, you know, especially if I was dealing with something that was pressing for a, quite a while and all that, especially when I had, like, certain things like that, you know, especially when I was dealing with a bad breakup or or two or three, you know, and, and it, it taken me a lot longer for me to process all these emotions, you know. Especially as I kind of talked about it, like, m multiple times on my vlog about about how difficult the first breakup that I was experiencing, you know, that was about, like, 12, I mean, 13 years ago, I should say. You know, and it's just almost like to this day it was, at, you know, that I was already contemplating the, that sort of thing there. And really, I should have just, uh, I should have done the whole deed to start off with instead of the other way around. And, you know, and then it took me like two years to get over that whole breakup there as far as that goes. At least to put that in the rear view mirror, you know. But it taken me maybe about like four, at least five or six, at least like six months or three months, I'm not exactly certain about that, but as far as the short of the long part, but the whole other part was just simply putting all of that in the rearview mirror, making sure that whoever it was that just stay in the past and not try to creep up on me and that sort of thing, you know. As far as all the other stuff here, you know, with, um, all these emotional moments of mine and all that, I think I had to learn to deal with it a little bit better, you know. I think that was, might have been, maybe one of the good parts of seeing some of those psychiatrists when I was in middle school at that point, and there were trying to help me in some ways the best to their abilities at some point or another. But I've always seemed to feel stuck looking in them in a negative light because of how I just always see them as trying to mold me into something that I wasn't and that sort of stuff when I was content with myself. But I just wanted them to try to accept me for me Instead of trying to go around and pick me apart and all that, you know, and especially when it came to, like, parents and all that, or 
or some of the teachers or some of my peers at that point. And, you know, I think if I was more bolder at that point and didn't care, you know, and was that sort of way it would have made a difference if I was more bolder and brazen about my about myself. You know, and that had that whole take it or leave it approach, you know. But that probably wouldn't make any favors for me. You know, but in some ways I think it took me a quite a while to rediscover myself as far as what it, what it is I'm truly am at that point because I always have been dealing with people that were always that would have picked me apart for every little thing you know and wanted to mold me into something that I wasn't or I mean even though their intentions were the best at some point but I've always see it I always see it at that sort of way, even though they never really saw it that kind of way, you know, and how I was more individualistic about all that sort of stuff, you know, and more wanting to march to my own beat, you know, but it was just something that was just, that needed to be addressed, and I think it was something that, you know, that I was... A, I was a square peg in a round hole in a, a, some sort there, and I didn't want them to go around and shave off the corners or whatever it is and just leave it alone. And then in reality, it's just, why can't they just uh, saw, off the, saw off the corners on the holes instead of the other way around? Yeah. That sort of thing, you know? As far as that goes, you know? But, considering all of that, I think that was just simply because of the fact that those people there just didn't know what I had, and that I just had Asperger's there, and, and even if they knew at that point, you know, they just did not know how to help me there anyways. So, considering all of this sort of stuff, you know, I, I wonder what would have happened if, if I was able to go back in time and give them some sort of book about, like, the, the whole thing about Asperger's and then and then put it in sort of a notes, like, there to say that not to go around and treat it like it's something that needed to be cured and all. And just treat it as something that is like another race or any other immutable trait as far as that goes. You know, and I can't really change that part of myself, you know. It's just the thing with my eye. It's just the thing with me being gay and all of that. You know, I can't really change any of that part, you know. And, and what was really upsetting to me at that point growing up was I never tried to go around and change everyone at that point to, to suit my needs and all that whether it was my parents or whatever because they would have whacked me up the side of the head and my parents would have just distanced themselves or whatever and any of these other people would have distanced themselves from me so why did you go around and try to do that with me I never really understood that sort of thing with that you know, why certain people could be this sort of way, you know. Although, my only regret about doing these kind of stuff is that I wish I had been able to go around and enjoy those type of parts of my life, and then, you know, when I was a, a teenager and all this, and even maybe like my early 20s and all that, you know, without having to deal with, um, with such people like that, you know, and, but then again, it's just life and all that, and, and the truth there is, I could have had it worse, I could have had all that worse, and I shouldn't be 
such there, you know what I mean? After all, I mean, it's one of the things I had stated many times before, you know, and on these other kind of topics, you know. So, anyways, I guess that's probably it until next time, so talk to you guys later.